Welcome back to my Phantom Force of Sniping Guide. So in part 1 we covered beginner tips, and in this video we're going to be covering intermediate tips. So pretty much what I define as an intermediate sniper is someone who's just been using it for a while and they're getting decent and they're starting to get the hang of it, but they still need a little push to get to what I consider advanced. And the next video will be an advanced sniper tips. So, yes, uh, uh subscribe. So tip number one is to know where your crosshair is, and this will help immensely with quick scoping, which is a really important skill, especially if you're an aggro sniper. So pretty much, as you're ADSing and you're pulling your gun up, you just want to know where you're pointing the entire time, like, you want to have a sense of the center of your screen, because you don't have to be fully scoped in to shoot. Like, look in half these clips, half the time I'm just kind of closing my crosshair in on them and then shooting. You just kind of scope in as much as you need to, shoot, and you don't even necessarily need your sight. And this is great because it allows you to get faster kills, and it allows you to aim the entire time as you're ADSing if you have a good sense for this. Like, instead of ADSing and then fine-tuning your aim, you can aim the entire time you're scoping into someone. And this works great for actual scopes too, if not better. Pretty much just learn how to quick scope, but you can't do that if you don't have the sense of the center of your screen. Tip number two is probably the most important thing to learn in Phantom Forces in general, and that is where enemies spawn. So you really, so for positioning, right? I mentioned in the last video, that is the most important skill. So really, you want to position yourself in a way that allows you to kill them when they have the disadvantage. So right when they spawn, you want to know the path they're going to take to the map. You want to know where they spawn, where they're going, and where to set yourself to get kills. Alright, so say that your team is here, here, and here. Just pretend these are buildings on a map, right? And say they're spawning here, or here or something, right? So, you guys are shooting in at them, but, uh, so yeah, pretty much, you're pretty much set to kill them from out here, but say some of your teammates move in, so now they're here. They're gonna stop spawning here, so they might start spawning out here, or back here, or anywhere else that's not there, so if you see your teammates go in and you know they stop spawning, you're gonna want to switch, and also keep in mind the path they're gonna take, so they know you're here, so they're gonna be going here, so what you might want to do is say this is this is you you might want to go right here so you can snipe them as they go across or spawn I mean pretty much this is something you just learn with experience and that was just a quick hypothetical of something that might happen all right so another tip I have is to be incredibly unpredictable with movement so in this game you're given a lot of tools you have sliding imp sliding super jumps vaulting Combine all those to be very hard to hit because you can take advantage of that as a sniper because you fire one bullet at a time Like you can spasm around the map being incredibly hard for someone with an automatic to track And then you just shoot one shot and they're dead now This one's a little bit hard for me to explain fully and like how to move and when to move But this one I just say watch better players to find out how they move and how they dodge shots, you know? Alright, tip number four is that snipers play different than automatics. Like, you can't have quite the same play style between them. Like, for example, snipers, you're usually harder to notice, so you can take advantage of this. Like, you can hold a flank really well and not have to peek back behind cover, whereas with an automatic, you're shooting a stream of bullets, they're gonna notice you better. So, you just gotta take advantage of the certain strengths that snipers have. Like, for example, say you're fighting someone with an automatic weapon in a one-on-one. -on -one. So they have a time to kill. They have a little bit more versatility in some ways, like they can fire a stream of bullets so if they miss their first click they could just retrack on you. However, you only need to hit one shot and you win. So you might want to do something like go behind cover and slow peek and bait them into getting one shot by you. So pretty much, again, watch a lot of players and how they play with snipers. You don't quite do it the same as automatics. Alright, so tip number five is to know your weaknesses. Now this could be just the weaknesses of sniping as a whole, which would be things like you have a you have a one-shot potential, but you have a slower fire rate. So if you're fighting multiple enemies, you gotta peek in and out of cover or use your movement really well or both. Or it could just be about the weaknesses of yourself. Like say you're bad at long range, then you wanna practice it still so you can get good at it and make that no longer a weakness, but you need to know that in your head and like if you're bad at long range don't stick to only long range you know like if you're trying to do well play to your advantages but again you should still work on the things you're bad at just so you can improve i'm just saying be aware of it as well as of the advantages and disadvantages of the weapon you're using 
Okay, tip number six has been unexpected, but it's basically just take breaks. Now, you might think that it'd be worse for your skill, but in reality, the only experience I've had is that taking breaks helps me. Because it kind of helps you eliminate bad habits, and you can take a break for a couple hours, days, weeks, months, just however long you don't want to play, you know? And what I've noticed is that every time I come back, I'm even better than when I left after I get back into the flow of it, once I'm warm again, you know? I mean, I'm sure this differs from person to person, but personally, when I don't take enough breaks, if I'm just playing way too long for way too often, I start to get fatigued. Even though it's just a video game, it just becomes mentally and physically harder to just put my full effort in. Like, your brain doesn't really want to because you're tired of it. So, just taking a break helps so much. I, I recommend you try it. Our tip number seven is to do your best to stay calm. So pretty much, don't get angry and don't get nervous. Just try not to be jittery. Just anything that's going to mess up your aim, really. I mean, for different people, different amounts of those emotions will affect them differently. Like for me, if I'm angry, it's way harder for me to be good. When I'm chill, I'm so much better. However, some people might do better when they're actually tilted. It, it just depends. And again, or something I got to specify is that anger isn't the same as like, a mild frustration or getting competitive like getting competitive helps me a ton so that's different I, you just don't want to get like tilted angry rage you know because then that that might mess up your aim just figure out what you got to avoid tip number eight is also kind of unexpected but it's to get a fast melee so something like the brass knuckles or bare fists with a 17.5 movement speed is incredibly useful so when you're not fighting, you pull that out and you run around with it like you're playing CSGO. Which, that's incredibly helpful, especially when it comes to tips that I mentioned earlier, like like going to where the enemies are or going to their spawn and just putting yourself in a more advantageous position. You can do that really fast with the melee. However, just make sure you know where your enemies are if you're running around with the melee, that way you don't get caught with your pants down. Okay, tip number 9 only really applies if you have a good PC and a monitor higher than 60Hz. However, it might still be worth listening to because there are still some benefits even if you don't have a higher than 60Hz monitor. So, you can go download this thing called the Roblox FPS Unlocker and get higher than 60FPS. Which, trust me, that is huge. The game feels 10 times better with that. If you can get up to like, because I run 165, so that's almost three times as much FPS. It is so smooth the first time you try it. Like, because I get that in every other game, but the first time I found out about Roblox unlocking, I was like, wait, I could do that? And as a result, my gameplay got a lot better. So one more thing to note is that even if you don't have an over 60 Hertz monitor, you won't notice a difference in feel if you uncap your FPS, but it still might be worth it because if your computer is capable of running higher, for some reason, the amount of frames your game is running is tied to recoil. So even if your refresh rate is 60, if you're running over 60, you're gonna get a reduction of recoil for some reason. This isn't that relevant on snipers, but I'm just saying, you might as well. Alright, so tip number 10 is that if you're not likely to be noticed in a certain area, you can just go for random wall banks. I don't mean random, like literally random, but like, if someone's marked through a wall and you're not in a bad position, you might as well just shoot at them, because you might just get a free kill. There's also another use wall banks have. Alright, so say you and another sniper are kind of in a stalemate battle across the map. You can go back behind your cover and try to wall bang through that corner to hit him. You could also do it the other way around and try to wall bang through his wall. And I'll show an example real quick. Alright, that's about it for this video. Um, my next video is going to be an advanced sniper tips guide. Thing is, is that that might take a little longer and a lot of the tips might be more niche just because most of the general snuff with getting good at sniping is just practice just you will become advanced if you just practice so it's a little hard to find tips for that but yeah stay tuned uh subscribe if you want to see that